Hey, what is up you guys? It is Tyler. Welcome back, back, back to the Tyler Williams channel and welcome to part two of the Death of Pro Wrestling podcast. If you're just tuning in and you haven't watched episode one, part one just yet, please go check that out. Link in the description. A good hour and a half long chat I had with my good friends Joseph Montesillo and Forasova. We continue where Forrest left off getting into his opinions on Evil's reign now in japan now before we get into that for silva did go into a very 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 long rant about it and i felt like i didn't want to mess up the vibe of the podcast so what i did was i took some of his rants and i left it in the beginning and if you want to hear the entire rant in its entirety it will be at the very end of this video so the podcast is probably going to go into like that hour the hour nine hour 10 minute mark and then his part will continue on in its entirety right afterwards so stay tuned for this podcast for the entire forest sova director's cut <laughs> or the, the forest sova cut of his opinions on evil that being said let's get straight in to the rest of the death of pro wrestling podcast i don't understand these people who come out here and say, oh, Naito's going to get this long, great reign, when it's like, that was never the point. Ever. I mean, the point... I thought that he would would get it. I thought that he would get, let's say, a year-long reign, only because in my head, I was like, okay, Okada is clearly going to win G1 and is clearly going to face probably Naito to... Because Okada needs the win back at Wrestle. Boo. He just does. Right, but, but that means... If Okada needs the win back at Wrestle Kingdom, that means he walks in with the belt. That's Maybe. just yeah, but no, it, it was it foiled hurts. though. It was foiled as soon as the pandemic started, and you had three months with no title at all for Naito. He comes back, and he has his first defense back. I mean, basically, you could just say this was part two in New Japan because New Beginning was part of Wrestle Kingdom, you know, epilogue or whatever. Yeah. And it's like he comes yeah, yeah, back, the, he has the defense, and then it's up. over. It's like, well, bro, if you had two title defenses, oh, me... I mean, two reigns, and they both ended in a very short fashion, I feel like you should just give up on going for the heavyweight championship at this point. Like, it's over for you. Uh, I mean, okay, here's, here's the thing. I'm going to speak on this little bit of negativity before I get into defending this decision because I because I am going to defend it. One, people out there, I'm, I'm a big night of I have been railing against this company for not doing Naito well for so long. For, for all of 2018, 2019, it's all I did. Like, my YouTube video was just being fucking mad about Naito. So what happens is, I had a realization in 2019. I, ha- I had an epiphany. And it's that New Japan has no story in mind. There isn't a grand design. It's not real. It- it's fake. It's, it's, it's the idea that New Japan is creating some kind of grand story arc. They aren't. So Naito goes and he wins the championship. It was building to that. Blah, 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 blah. It was this big epic story. Okay, cool. What comes after? There isn't There isn't anything afterwards that needs to happen. Not necessarily. Now, no. I thought it, it doesn't, it doesn't, no. Like what I'm saying is that it doesn't need to happen. There isn't like, oh, Naito is going to lose it to this guy because it is significant because it was set up. 16 years ago when they met each other in Animal Hamaguchi's it, gym. It, like, that's very true because I it, felt it, like it, after it, it, after he won the title at the Wrestle Kingdom, I'm like, I said this even before he won it. I'm like, where do you go after Naito wins? It's like, okay, who do you set up aside from doing the whole LIJ thing with Hiromu and Sonata? And it's well, like, like I, they, I, mean, I mean, they set up Kenta. Jay White is going to be in the wing. Kota Ibushi is going up, to get a chance. Like, who does he lose it to is the question. It's going to be a championship reign. He can lose it to any top guy. Mm -hmm. The point of the the whole thing with Naito is that it was about the win. The championship championship reign was just gravy. It was nice. It was enjoyable that he would have a championship reign. But it was about him beating Okada in the main event of Wrestle Kingdom. People who are mad, and I'll, I'll get to this later. People who are mad, I thought... I should feel mad. I've been a Naito fan, and technically, in reality, in most scenarios, they fucked Naito. I should be irate. I'm not. I don't feel like you can really even care at this point, you know? I mean, you can, but I feel like you I, shouldn't, I, you know? 
I disagree because here is my rationale as the negative about New Japan guy. Here is my rationale to it. This match was two matches. Mostly the first half, a little, like outside of spare moment of this match is a cluttered fucking mess. Now, I recognized it halfway through this 40-minute match. The reason it's a cluttered fucking mess is because they have to establish a top heel on one day's notice. Mm-hmm. Right now, they have to establish top heel. So, most of the beginning of this match, it's it's not good. It's slow. It's, it's them boring. Like a beast, basically. They are. They they have to establish like okay, here are here's evil's thing. There and you'll notice there was no interference for the first. 35 Mm -hmm. minutes of this match because they had to establish evil's ness because it is a little bit different than it was in LIJ. He didn't, they had to establish evil's ness. And I was like, okay, I get it. I understand. There's a reason why the first half of this match is this way. That doesn't change the fact that the first half of this match is this way. This match happening the way that it did, setting up evil like this, blah, 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 blah. This confirmed to me what that evil, that this is an audible decision, that this wasn't the plan back in. It, it, that could, that, that, this is what confirmed it to me because they now need to establish evil as a Jay White equivalent. It has to, he has to be equivalent to Jay White's status that and hurts so me so much i yep. i i yep. agree those two i agree but i also don't put almost anyone near jay white so blah, blah, blah. so what what they have to do is they have they spend the first half of the, they have one one match now it's like essentially one match to establish evil's ness so they spend the first 20 to 25 minutes pretty much just doing that sparing moments like the like the baseball slide and the throwing into the barricade, I thought that was good. I was like, okay, the Kenta match went way too long with Kenta playing to the crowd. Naito is going after it. I agree with Joseph. Naito looked uh, bored, and he didn't commit to feeling like... He didn't feel like he had any feelings to it whatsoever. And so it wasn't about the result. The result is we'll see what the results leads to the angle set up at the end of the match i'm very interested i'm i'm interested the 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 restructuring of bullet club i'm interested i'm going to watch it i'm going to be i'm interested in it new japan pre and post coronavirus not even close to similar how it was going into new japan cup and mark it isn't it's I don't know if it's good. I don't know if it's bad. I know that I'm interested in it. I don't know if I'll be happy with it at the end of the year. But as a fan of New Japan, I think it's interesting that they went with the decision of blow it up. We'll figure it out as we're going. All right, but here's my perspective on this Mm -hmm. is that Historically, I have seen this play out, and I know what's at the end of the road. And the fact of the matter is, New Japan has been this prestige, best wrestling promotion in the world for five, six years now. And every five or six years, there's a new one. And it's it's not New Japan anymore. Like, I'm sorry to people who are upset about that. But New Japan is not the best pro wrestling promotion in the world right now. And they probably haven't been for a while. And promotions don't get bad in one night. No. It's very it's very slow. Mm-hmm. It's a gradual oh, yeah. decline from... It took, I, me I, a lo- it took me a long time to really, truly fall out of love with WWE. So I totally agree. Well, well no. Like, I, I understand what Joseph's saying. What and I that, like, what saying too. This is something... This is something that I talk about with the match length problem. If matches just continue to get longer, yes, you are satisfying a base 
now. You can't say, oh, well, the crowds are bigger. The crowds are getting bigger, so clearly there is something to it. If you look at their dead period in the middle of the 2000s, if you look at the early 2000s when Bob Sapp is wrestling and these guys are going, the business looked good, but then it drops off a cliff because that's what happens with the cliff. You have to be up high to fall off a cliff. Right, for sure. And like... When it comes to prestige wrestling like New Japan, where it gets so much critical praise, yeah. there is this level of faith that has been won over by the company. And I feel like people will be in denial for a very long time of the fact that it's just bad now. I truly believe that it is just bad now. And you can say that that uh, process has been accelerated because of COVID. Obviously, that put them in a way worse spot than they would have been. But this is a thing that has happened. Okay, I've been there. I was watching Ring of Honor in 2009. I was there saying, well, Steen versus Generico is still great. Well, Tyler Black, he's not a great champion, but Davey Richards is coming down the line. And the fact is, it's just downhill from here. Yeah. I, I do believe that there is opportunity for New Japan to maybe correct Always. course. Maybe if, maybe if there's a vaccine and they get back the talent that they want. But right now, as of this moment, and for the foreseeable future, probably one to two years down the line, New Japan is bad. Mm. And that's just how it is. And people are going to go out of their way to make excuses for New Japan because they love it so much. And that's how it's been forever. People made excuses for ROH. People made excuses for PWG. And no one talks about PWG anymore. People will make excuses for GCW or beyond. That's just how it is. Yeah. It's going to decline. It is in decline. But people are going to stick with it because they want to be part of the cool thing. Mm. I do. I, 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 I do totally agree. I, I, I do like, agree too. And I do feel like uh, when you're talking about this topic, you have like three of the right people. You have somebody like Joseph who looks at it kind of structurally. You have Forrest who looks like very far into the future. And then you have me who just kind of lives in the now. <laughs> when it comes to that type of thing. Like for me, I feel like I come away from this. And I don't know if I, I don't, oh, I can tell you right now, I don't think I like New Japan more coming out of this. I don't want to say I like it less, but I definitely don't like it anymore. Like, I don't feel like I, I, I don't, can't come I out of this saying no. that I'm super excited for what's to come. I come out of this saying I'm curious for what they're going to do next. I, I want to know I what do, happens next, I, but I don't think I'm excited I, for what happens next. I do agree with that, but I also think that that leads into what Joseph in that as fans of a company you are at a certain point you are the if you're in the bubble you are the last person to know when it's yep. about to burn absolutely if you are in that situation because as a fan you are going to rationalize it any which way speaking personally all of my criticism for New Japan derive from the same thing, honestly, that appeals to me is it's very it's very pattern based and that pattern can be analyzed and it can be broken down. That's interesting to me. That entices me. I'm doing math on my fucking YouTube channel. Uh, I like patterns and trends. It's in there that I find that fascinating. New Japan more than any other company follows that pattern and trend. And that is also my criticism of it. It follows a specific pattern. So when it's gone into chaos, to me, out of necessity, I have to, like, I'm interested in it. But I will also completely acknowledge I'm a fan. I'm a, I'm a fan. And so at the end of the day, I'm going to say I'm interested. I'm more interested in New Japan than I was when they were coming back from COVID. I'm way more interested. But I'm also a fan, and so I'm in that bubble, and I will, even though I am critical of New Japan, I and Tyler and anybody else 
no matter how much they praise it, how much they're critical of it. If you're in that bubble, you're the last person to know when it bursts. You're the last person to see it come. Everybody yeah, else yeah, you gets gotta out. You got to have like a certain uh, like a certain level of investment to almost kind of just look at it from a perspective and be like, "Well, this kind of sucks." But at the same time, I've been watching this for a long time. I can I kind of just can't see myself stopping now. I feel like when you come at it and you're just there, that's WWE yeah. though. Honestly, that, yeah, that's, exactly. That's, that's where I'm at now. I've been I've been watching that's I've been watching this weekly show for four years and i have to see how it that's, ends. It that's that's everybody end. and i feel like once you get to that point where you're like this is habitual but this also sucks and i don't really care for it anymore or you're in joseph's spot and you're like i'm here for the wrestling and whatever yeah. is else comes with it awesome then you look at this and you're like, well, this sucks and I don't see reason to watch it anymore. And I'm like, well, yeah, I can't fault you for it. Absolutely. Like, I don't, I would never fault sure. somebody being like, oh, yeah, I don't like this because I don't entirely follow it. And I'm like, yeah, fine. I, I just feel like for me, as somebody who watches New Japan pretty often, and by pretty often, I mean like just about every show except for like New Japan Road shows because I don't, or Road 2 because I don't really care for those. It's just one of those things where you're, you see the landscape and you see just how different we're going and you're like i gotta know where we're going with the g1 what wrestle kingdom looks like because it's like you're not going to put the title on evil and then just have him drop it like at king of pro wrestling in two months that makes no sense i'm assuming he's holding yeah. it until wrestle kingdom so what do you do a wrestle kingdom exactly that's what intrigues me the most well that and, and this will be the last thing that i say in that the reason I'm so interested is because there is no structure going forward because they don't have the same schedule set up. Like evil won it. So evil can lose it at any time when evil's going up against Hiromu. He's not going to oh, lose it to Hiromu. Not. Hiromu's the junior, but evil was evil and evil beat Naito. There's not a st show structure. We don't know if there's going to be a G one. Exactly. We have well, no we, idea. We, we, we so have they said it, but we don't exactly know if it's still going to happen or not. They haven't. They haven't. They, haven't, they said it, it they one said time. Yeah. They haven't said we're keeping the dates. Yeah. They've. They're, they're not announcing it that much in the future because they don't know if they can run shows three mm. months from now. They have a. They have a month blocked out. So there is no structure. It's like, oh well, uh, Evil's not going to lose it before G One, and he's not going to lose it before Wrestle Kingdom. So he's going to hold it until Wrestle Kingdom. Well. I don't know that because I don't know what their show structure is going to be because it's incomplete. Yeah, like I feel like if that is if there were ever a time to half ass watch New Japan, I'd be like, Okay, but you might be confused. But I feel like if there I were disagree. ever a time to recommend somebody to watch this product, this is absolutely not the time to do so. It's not far I, I would from it. Totally agree with that. I, I I don't think this is the time to half ass watch it. If you're a fan of New Japan, you should probably be watching pretty fucking regularly. Yeah. If now is not the time to look into nope. New Japan, because <laughs> the it, worst it's, time. it is not the time. I would totally agree because shit's fucked up out there. Exactly. I feel like from I just feel like in that sense, going forward with New Japan, you just don't know what's happening. Everything, this whole yeah. evil situation told me right out. If there was a plan B, they had to look for plan Z because there, that plan B was not guaranteed for them. And that's why they couldn't go that route. And, and that does contribute to what Joseph's talking about, where, I mean, how much did WCW people feel like this when that shit started? Like, oh, this is interesting. Like, this is, this is intriguing. We don't know what's going to happen next. And that's exciting. Yeah, exactly. Now. When, promo when promotional mismanagement happens... Like, again, the, the companies don't die in a year. It wasn't like, oh, the finger poke of doom happened, and then there was n then nobody watched WCW anymore. That's how it's told in history, but it isn't right. what happened. Mm. Promotional, so, like, promotional that's, malpractice and that's takes why place earlier over... I said years. curiosity and not excitement. Right, yeah. no, but that's where I'm coming from, in that I personally see already the product is bad. And I know 
just listening to you guys that you will still invest in it because it won your faith for so long and i'm just here to be like the little warning from the past to say this this we've been here before yeah. we really have i i totally agree i i i i get it and i'm it's actually like that is a perspective that I hadn't thought yeah, of. No. Because again, I'm in the bubble. How, how could I ever have that perspective? So even though we're fucking still talking, um, I'm totally glad that we did this because I hadn't considered that. That's a perspective that I can't have until someone introduces mm -hmm. it. Yeah, no, I definitely didn't think about it that way either. And I know I was talking to you guys in the chat about this like yesterday about new japan cup and i told you the guys that if okada won new japan cup and he went on to face naito i felt like that ruins everything i was building up to and i would probably have less investment in new japan than like ever so it's like i feel like there are certain scenarios for everybody where it's like this is my breaking point where i don't feel like i can invest as much anymore yeah i feel like everybody has that point you just gotta you're not gonna you're not directly looking for it obviously but when it when you're faced with it you're like okay i know this is when the time comes but it's prolonged yeah. i mean it it, it 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 comes at it comes for everybody but i mean people who are fans they they're the last ones who are going to realize that it's been bad for how long oh wow it's been a while oh, wow. honestly it's been a while like i said that's why i say when I watch your videos, especially Forrest, I feel myself disliking New Japan more. <laughs> <laughs> because it's... Uh, man. Well, we've been talking about Dominion and New Japan for a very long-ass time. And I feel like for that matter, there were some things I wanted to tackle in here that we're going to have to skip. Because we're at the two-hour mark already. Well, here... Okay, so can I, can I actually ahead. say... Uh, the topics that you have here... Uh, I'll give you some... A little bit of uh, happiness here. Um, you, I, I know that you wanted to talk about Great American Bash and Fighter Fest. I haven't seen those, so I can't say anything. So you can knock this out in six Listen, minutes. Listen, this was it's true. This is what, and I'm this cherry. is why I brought it up because I knew that both of you guys probably didn't even touch it. Yeah, let, let's. So just I knock want this to know. Out. Yeah. Why did you not watch either one of these shows? I want you guys to explain to you because a lot of people know you guys as the New Japan Pro Wrestling viewers or All Japan or, you know, some type of Puresu or something like that. Why is it that when it comes to North American pro, like, pro Wrestling, the most well-known there is, you choose not to watch NXT or AEW? It's Wednesday Night Wars, right? It, it's, it's the best thing about wrestling. Why not watch it? That is a very easy question. For NXT, uh, it's bad. <laughs> and, <laughs> for for AEW, it's less good without a crowd. Like they're severely handicapped, and it really took a lot of the fun out of it for me. I I used to watch Dynamite every week without fail, but as soon as they transitioned into having no crowds, I, it, it it all the magic was gone. Yeah, I guess I guess I can say that. I do feel like Dynamite definitely has fallen off in terms of quality once the crowds disappeared. For NXT, and a lot of people watch my channel already know this, for me, once Charlotte won the championship, that was my breaking point. That was my point where I said, oh, no, 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 no. I am not watching this company until she loses that title because I don't want to watch her every single week. I, I don't have it in me to do that. So that was my breaking point with NXT. With AEW, I haven't reached that point yet because I feel like I'm kind of blinded by a lot of the whole new fandom. It's also, it's also, yeah, it's newer, and, and don't I mean, you don't wrong. have the if time. It's, to, if there's something I mean, wrong, I'm gonna call them out. There's been plenty of times where I say AEW is bad. Yeah, I'm not one of the people sure. who, who just like, oh, everything is fine, everything is perfect. I'm so grateful that we have wrestling. Like, no, if it's trash, it's trash. That's just the end of the. That's the end of it. Yeah, but I feel like with AEW's case. They've been around for such a short period of time. You have a little bit of sympathy for them when they have shit that goes wrong. And you're like, okay, I'll try to bear with yeah. it. With NXT, it's like you've been around for my, a long ass time. You don't really get easy passes like that. My mindset towards AEW was you can't criticize them in 2019. Of course you couldn't. Be like, you be like, no, I mean like fundamentally you're being unfair because – 
like you can say like oh these matches aren't good i just mean from creative decisions and, and those standpoint if you're criticizing that like the weekly show at that point you're you're being unfair because these are people who haven't who are yeah, just new- running a weekly show and give them three months mm-hmm. to yeah. figure it out to figure sure. out what works what philosophy they want to go with who to not listen to it's so difficult to figure out in a room of 10 voices who to magnify and who not to fucking don't listen to brandy brandy has bad ideas don't listen to cody when he's coming up with brandy ideas don't listen to him when when the young bucks are saying hey let's sign all our tag team friends probably listen to them because they because their their voice is valuable there when it's come to this, listen to that. When I got like you have to you have to fuck that up to learn not to do that. You have to fuck up the dark order, take them away, and then redo them so that like you have to fuck that up to redo them and get people interested in them. I don't watch AEW. About don't watch Great America. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm just gonna say right. I don't watch a, I don't watch NXT. Uh I I, I don't watch WWE in general. Um, I, I I think NXT is. Uh, I think NXT is more sinister than Raw and Smack. Raw and SmackDown are bad, and they're pushing a an evil company's agenda yeah, I can't see through. What's happening there? I gave up on it after the Rumble. I'm, uh, I'm and, and yeah, NXT like, is insidious. Yes, because NXT has your interest and insidious. And it is there. And I, I talked about this in a video that I made uh, called The All Elite mm-hmm. Epidemic, where I talked about what NXT functions as. And WWE and any billion dollar company is amazing at hiding evil in, like, in front, like, behind a nice face. For sure. N- NXT exists to gut independent promotions. And how is everybody in this place that doesn't need to make money? Because it, it the tool of NXT far outweighs. In my its ability opinion, to make I money. feel like, like NXT is there, money. so that way you're like, well, there's some good in WWE. Because I'll be completely honest with exactly. you, exactly. If NXT it's, didn't it's, exist, it's, I would it's, no it's, longer be a WWE fan whatsoever. It's a brand Not that a people can identify with. It wasn't NXT, called. Yeah, it NXT was, isn't a creative endeavor it is there specifically so that people can say nice things about the wwe mm-hmm. for a little bit it's there yeah. it's there as a front it wasn't wwe uk it was nxt uk they're not talking about NXT wwe japan. japan they're talking about NXT mm-hmm. japan nxt expanding people are like i'm willing to give this a chance i'm not a super positive but i'm willing to give it a chance <laughs> wwe is expanding boo uh it's 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 the relationship between brand and consumer i i've made a million videos on this I don't watch AEW because it's not for me. Uh, yep. it, it, it's mm-hmm. not for me. And I tried to watch it just to keep up with culture. Um, and because I, I need to watch things to make me. And AEW it, it bring, brings in that those sweet hits, baby. <laughs> gotta get those uh, clicks. Yeah, gotta, get, gotta get those clicks. <laughs> um, so what happens is that I watch it. I, and I eventually fall out watching it week to week because it's not for me. I keep thinking this show isn't very good. I can't criticize it too bad because it's still the first three months and I can't be a hypocrite on myself. But I, I would think this show isn't super enjoyable. And then I would see people overwhelmingly praising it. People whose opinions I respect overwhelmingly praising it. And I'm like, okay, there's clearly something a little bit off. And then I watched um, – Full Gear, their their show, la- their their pay per view last November. I watched it, and I was like, "This was a mess of a show," and it, it was it was baffling at every turn. And I realized, like, it's this isn't for me. Like, I'm not getting anything out of watching. I- I'm not interested. It's I'm not interested in it as a wrestling company. It, it's it's not for me. It's not made for me. It's not made with me in mind which is fine not everything's for everybody i don't want like i'm interested in as a social experiment of how do people react when they get the things that they claim to have wanted from wwe 
Turns out a pretty fucking mixed reaction. But I'm interested in, in that. I'm interested in AEW culturally. I don't give a fuck about NXT culture. There's no culture in Anymore. NXT. Anymore. Oh, I feel like for me, NXT really peaked bad. in 2016. A- I think, yeah. Fake. Fake culture. Fake culture. Fake. fake, fake. The, the, how do you have fake wrestling matches? Like, I could conceivably say those matches are fake. And really be able to explain it. If they're not, it's not a real thing. NXT is a front. It's a lawn. It's a money laundering scheme. It's it's a pyramid scheme to make Triple H less egregious in his war crimes. Oh That's what God. it's there for. <laughs> like, You're not what, wrong at all. That's what it's not there for. Triple H buries CM Punk in 2011. The next year, he's associated with developmental talent. You think yep. Triple H is the good is the good guy? He made a career out of putting himself over and still went on to have the longest match at WrestleMania. And people are wondering, why don't these women's matches get longer? Because Triple H is blocked out for 75 minutes. Correct. And, but, he, but he's the good one. I don't, I don't watch NXT because it's fake and it's evil. Takeover, takeover is not impressive to me. You have five matches that all run 45 minutes and they're all yeah. good. Good for you. No other company in the world can do that. Mm-hmm. Nobody. None of them. They have to make money. So I don't I don't watch it because it's fake. AW, it's not for me. All right, Joseph, you go. Uh, Great American Bash, watch Timothy Thatcher versus Oni Larkin. Fighter Fest, watch Chris Jericho versus Orange Cassidy. Literally all you need to know about those two Man, shows. Two matches? Two That's matches. it. Well, That's it. Was Io Sasha good? It was, it was, it it was, was all right. right. It was okay. It was yeah, fine. I don't think I don't think so, it really so he, lived up to expectations, but it definitely was not. Yeah, that's fair. It wasn't like something. The it, thing about the thing about that match is that I mean, I, I watched Stardom here and there, and I watched EO's um, whatever their tournament was, May Young Classic. I watched that. I dug that. She wrestled Zaya Brookside, and I was like, oh, she can do Stardom stuff because Zaya's worked Stardom, and she can work a little stiff. She could step on her chest and do good moonsault. Cool. I like cool. you. Everyone, everyone does. Sasha Banks, I've always thought she's fine. Uh, not as she's not as great as she is lauded, but she's also had everybody's best match in the company. So what the fuck? Obviously, that match is made as bait. Oh, absolutely. To just stuck people in, but and I, and I like, but I never really hear things. And when I found enjoyment in WWE in the last few years, it has been going and watching women's matches. Evolution. I thought Evolution was great. Ronda Rousey match. I thought those Ronda Rousey matches were really good. Like I found enjoyment in women's matches in the last two years that I've I watched. definitely agree with you. I always felt like NXT was women's division was really the best thing about NXT for a very, 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 very long time. So I definitely agree with you on yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to know like EO Sasha, obviously, like I didn't really hear a lot about it. I don't hear a lot about NXT in general. I, I sort of seek out. AEW stuff because as a social experiment I have to kind of gather my NXT I don't care true okay so coming from somebody who in the very beginning of the whole Wednesday Night War thing capitalized on it by doing live streams for both shows I felt like NXT then and NXT now are not even the same thing not even close NXT felt like more of a variety of back then and then on top of that you have the added factor of if you're somebody like me and you only watch it i'm not talking about raw i'm not talking if you only watch nxt and you get invested in these people and then they leave what why do you want to get invested in anyone else these people are going to leave you you're not going to see them again matt riddle was my favorite wrestler in nxt and he has been for a long time and guess what I'm never going to see Matt Riddle again unless it's WrestleMania or Rumble. That's just a fact of the matter. I mean, now that he had those allegations, I don't really even care for Matt Riddle much anymore. But before that, <laughs> yeah. before that, he was my favorite. And I'm like, I- I'm not going to see thing. him anymore. Bianca Belair. Here's loved the thing. her. Here's the thing, Tyler, is that you could have avoided this entire calamity by doing what I did. Is go back in time and just fucking hate Matt Riddle because of his UFC no, not even just Matt Riddle. I, not even just Matt Riddle. I, I, no, like, I'm just using him as a specific example in that I have never, I've watched one and a half Matt Riddle matches out of spite, out of just anger 
for the fact I know I'd like it. I know I would enjoy Matt Riddle's work. I know that in my core. But I've refused. I watched his match with Suzuki at the first Blood Sport, and I watched half of the Fight Pit Matt Thatch. And I just I, if you just you you just go back in time and you hate his UFC career, you save yourself a lot of of frustration. Everything else, yeah, like getting invested in NXT and the people are going to leave. That's honestly, but that's kind of wrestling. Like it's wrestling. That's always, every, I mean, that's always been literally. wrestling, but at the same time, it's it, everywhere except Raw and SmackDown. Raw and SmackDown, they just stay forever. That's. But if you watch, if you watch Ring of Honor, you're you probably you you love these people. They are probably going to leave once they gain enough profile because yep. that is the transitionary nature of the business. Absolutely, I get what you're saying, but from my perspective, these are people who you're watching for like two three years bianca blair was in nxt for three years and then all of a sudden she gets her title match against Rhea ripley loses and then she's gone never to be seen again um, and, and and for me personally I, when it comes to watching promotions it's just AEW and new japan i mean i watch other promotions sparingly but those are the ones i follow the most so it's like if i see these guys when new japan i don't really see these guys leave and i mean it's a different culture so that's kind of separate but I don't know. For me personally, I just can't get invested in it for those two reasons. And yeah. then for the third reason, I just feel like with the NXT mats formula, at the very beginning, I noticed this a lot more, not a lot less now, but they had epic match, epic match, epic match, epic match, epic match. And it's like, I feel like after a certain point, when all you have is great matches every single week, it just kind of gets tiresome. It's like, okay... I understand these matches are good, but is there any layers to this? What else are we having here? Like, I felt like when I'm watching AEW, I'm watching for the story. When I tune on NXT, I'm watching because Leo Rush and Angel Garza are going to kick ass. And that's cool if you're just suspending your, uh, trying to get away from, you know, the whole booking aspect and being a whole, like, smart or whatever you want to call them. But I feel like when you're just watching it for that, I mean, Joseph might might be into that type of stuff just not nxt but i feel like for me i just can't really get into just the whole oh we're having great matches every single week this is why you have to watch nxt it's like yeah what else is there with aew that's something i've been watching every single week consistently i live stream on this channel obviously for me with aew i feel like it was made for an audience that i sort of just fell into because it's new because they have the guys that I like from New Japan, because they have guys that I like from the Indies, I was able to support it a lot faster. I was able to stay on top of it a lot more than usual. However, there's a lot of consistency with AEW. The tag matches, very consistent. The booking with certain factions, like the Dark Order, like certain people, just showing up one week, and then you don't see them for weeks or months upon end. Sadie Gibbs, Sunny Kiss, before the pandemic. It's like, they have their issues... And that's fine, but I feel like it's just a little bit easier to digest because it's new. Because I'm able to just, okay, I can kind of understand where they're coming from. So, that's kind of where I fit. I'm not trying to drag that on for too long because we're already about to be two and a half hours in. We're, this is going on for a very long time. <laughs> so, what we're going to do is, we had some questions that you guys asked us. And we were going to answer those. But real quickly, rapid fire. We're at July, so we made it halfway through 2020. We're survived halfway through 2020, honestly. Survived, because this year's sucked ass. But um, if we have to go through the promotions, and all of them were trash. Yeah, for yeah the they're targeting year. a very specific But market. what promotion did you say excelled this year, despite all efforts? Stardom. Stardom. Uh, probably DDT for me. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's probably it's probably DDT or, like, Noah or something. I don't. I didn't watch them. <laughs> it's it probably it's probably the cut like whatever company was good but was also running shows yeah so everyone's kind of disqualified if you're running shows. yeah I, it's like i kind of want to say aw but it's like you're running shows like literally every single week without miss it's like i can't even say them well well i mean like they're the only ones who can really be in consideration new japan's run for uh, two and a half months exactly so it's like your only category is really aw nxt it's like mm, I don't uh, well know. no i mean well all Japan has kept running DDT. I'm talking kept about running like Noah. Every, that, yeah. is, that only watches like the hot shit. And then it's really just. It's probably it's probably DDT. I've heard that DDT has actually been. Really 
It might be. I don't want the DDT enough. For me, I don't really have one. Feud of the year. Feud of the year. Um, oh, boy. Has there been a good one? Naito Kento was good. I mean, that was really short, though. I don't think it really can go on. I mean, I, I mean, like, it, does it have to be strong? I mean, it doesn't have to be, month? but I mean, that's like January 4th to like February, what, 9th? You're right, but like, what I'm saying is that, I mean, if you're looking for it, like, oh, it can't last more than a month, it has to well, yeah, extend that's really further. No and you're, talk you say and you're talking about, you're talking about like Western wrestling, because in, in New Japan, their feuds last for pretty much a month. Pretty much. Or if you want to do the whole thing where like we have callbacks and they last for years, but it was it was Naito Kensa to me was the most like the entire purpose was that it was engaging. And it was like the whole like it it, it was engaging and whether or not the match was good, the fact is that I, I spent more time thinking about that than I did thinking about anything else. And I mean I didn't watch a lot of wrestling. I, I haven't watched a lot of it, so no, it's I tough. think I'd, I'd probably go with the elite versus the inner circle. That's what I, guess. I was going to say too. Yeah, but that that I feel like that's a very weak answer. It's not been a good feud year in wrestling. No, yeah, not really. All right, hidden gem of the year. Not necessarily match of the year, but something that you feel like people don't talk about as much as they should. Rapongi 3K versus Mega Coaches from uh, it was the last New Japan show that they ran. Now this is obviously it's a New Japan match. But um, I, I thought that this match, this this is what I've been calling the match of the year since it happened. Like I haven't rewatched anything, but I was floored by how much I loved it. All right, here's the correct answer, gentlemen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is a Joseph question. Yes, it is. Uh, if you're talking hidden gems, we're looking at Daniel Makabe versus Judas Icarus. From three to one battles, hindsight 2020, January 10th. Uh, I believe it should be on three to one battles YouTube page. It's there for free. If it's not there, it'll be on their Twitch page. You can watch it absolutely for free. They are some amazing wrestlers from the uh, Pacific Northwest region of the independent scene. Check those guys out. It's amazing. I'm gonna go cop out and just say money in the bank. I just found like I just felt like that was like too much fun and it was too goofy. Hey, that's, a, that's a hidden gem. That was no, a hidden. Hidden. It's a prominent like at least my match. You're right. It's not. This isn't a hidden. Gem. But it's at least a match that was overlooked and no one talks about. I have to go to cop out because it's like I'm thinking about what is a hidden gem. And the only match he's from my mind is Yano and Takashi, and I'm like, that's not a hidden gem. It's like, oh fuck, I guess I don't you know, have an answer. You know, I will go a little bit back, and I'll say uh, in Stardom Cinderella Tournament, Konami versus Azumi in the first round. It's that's three fair. minutes. It's three minutes long, and every second of it is the perfect wrestling match. Wait, 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 yeah, wait, that's wait, totally. wait, wait. Was Mayu versus Takumi Roha this year? I think that was this year, right? All right, that's yeah, my, yeah, all right, that that's my answer. Year. That's barely a hidden gem. That was a Damn it. main event. <laughs> you know what? Not, not hidden at all. It's Are a hidden gem me? because people don't watch Stardom, okay? Most popular women. Takumi Iroha is like super world. popular and Mayu is super popular. Takumi is super popular to like the lowest common denominator of like American fans that actually watch Stardom, I guess. Ask, ask somebody to recommend it, uh, a Joshi match and like from 2020 and you will probably get Mayu versus Takumi Iroha. You're, sure. probably, not definitely. You're probably not gonna get Konami versus Azumi from Cinderella's turn. All right, and then Arisa versus B. I don't know. Yeah, no, that matters. All right, match of the. <laughs> Listen, like I said, my answers, my answers <laughs> were not hidden gems. I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. We're just going with some cop out answer, okay? All right. Yeah. Uh, go, watch, go, go watch Joseph's and my stardom one because Joseph's is the real answer. Mine, I don't watch wrestling. <laughs> Exactly. So, uh, match of the year, match of the mid year. What was like the best match of the mid year so far for you guys? Rabongi 3K and Mega Coach. Wait, how's that your hidden gem and your match? Correct of the year? answer. <laughs> <laughs> y'all come in, y'all come in with these incorrect picks, Lord. and I'm the one with the correct answer. Let me guess. Is it you can a guess. You can Robbie guess. Eagles you can match? Know, let me let me say. You're not gonna fucking guess it. There's no way you're gonna guess what the fuck Joseph is, is watching. Is it a Robbie Eagles match? Okay. No, right, it's well, not. never mind. 
the correct answer is Go Shiozaki versus Kazuyuki Fujita. Uh, you know oh, you know what? what? Fucking, yeah, that match was lit. That's a weird art. Yeah, that's a weird art. That, that was lit. <laughs> for the GHC Heavyweight Championship, and they <laughs> stare at each other for 35 minutes, and it's the greatest thing that will exist this year, yeah, and nothing is touching it. It's nothing. weird. It is weird. I, I didn't watch it because, like, if I know that that's going to happen, it's hard to get in. If, if I know, okay, it's 35 minutes, well, then I'm checking the clock. That's not fair to that match. That is a weird art match in that it's either the greatest thing ever to you or it's the worst. No Absolutely. middle. And I appreciate That is someone using no audience to its absolute yes. And if they're the only ones who figured that, out. I will. I... I yeah, that's a that's a that's a good pick. Um, what was the fucking? Um, oh yeah, for me, I'm this... gonna I'm gonna say uh, Haruma versus Will Ospreay, Wrestle Kingdom 14. I have a bias because I was there. You basic. I know. You're so bias basic. I was there, you know what? I know. You know what was a really good. You know what? What was also a really good match? I believe it happened this year. It had to have happened. It was also in Noah. It was um, uh, Katsuhiko Nakajima versus Hideki Suzuki. I thought that, that was, was all right. I thought I, I thought that was one. really good. It's really good. It's not a weird art match, so it's not. you can probably approach it a little bit easier. All right, cool. Yeah, I'm half tired, so like I, I'm, I'm just like kind of flubbing my way through. No, I feel you. you stam stamina gets. Yeah. All right, wrestler of the mid year. <laughs> I mean, like I don't evil. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I don't watch it. I, like, can I? Can we just say? I'm just gonna agree with Joseph and say that it's Daniel Bryan. Yes. The correct answer. Thank you, Forrest. I like. I, look, I I follow you on Twitter. I, I I read your match reviews. I read most of them, so I know what you've been saying about Daniel Bryan, and it's probably the right answer, because he's the greatest wrestler ever, and they just let him wrestle, so he's the wrestler of the year. Yeah. No, I mean that's fair. If he, he you're on a show that is consistently going, and you're just told just fucking go do whatever you want. Okay. Yeah, and he's. He's a guy who can make matches work without a crowd because uh, the action itself is so compelling yeah. and intricate, and he can wrestle in literally any situation. Yeah, he was made for this year. I, I think that the the two options that that come into my head are like maybe and maybe it's because I read Joseph's honestly very good uh, match. I think they're great, by the way, Joseph. I can't, I can't talk up, talk up Joseph's uh, output. You know, the guy, the guy is is Joseph fantastic is at everything he does. Um, kind. but it's like the only two that come to mind because it can't be a New Japan guy. It, it just can't. Not, be. Nah, it's it's the only company. It's the only company I watch really. Like I watch New Japan and Stardom. I don't even count them. They haven't been running shows. So, it ha like the only people that I've heard about are. Daniel Bryan and Kenny Omega. Um, They've been consistently yep. doing things. And I think that the only reason I really think this is because I read Joseph's reviews and he was, would say things like Daniel Bryan is really creeping up on Kenny Omega's position of wrestler of the year. Daniel Bryan has surpassed Kenny Omega. Blah, blah, blah. Like, <laughs> yeah. I think that that has been planted in my head. But when I hear about, AEW, it's usually oh Kenny's doing something or oh I miss Kenny in New Japan. No, you don't. Leave it be. Apparently he's doing pretty well. Yeah, he's my, doing great. My yeah. answer is a a, my answer is a collective of Heyman Page and Kenny Omega. Oh, yeah, yeah. fair enough. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Said, Kenny is a very Kenny well, is. I'm gonna stop just skipping over Heyman Page. I mean, I'm not gonna say and say true. he's the best wrestler in the world, but I feel like he's the best character in AEW. That's why I like him so much. Yeah, that's fair. He connected with a lot of people. That and the storyline, I feel like, with him, just, like, that slow burn, like, just not liking the elite. I'm like, yeah, I totally agree, Heyman Page. They are a bunch of scumbags. Ah, uh, the, yeah, the elite, they don't like each other, but they don't want to hurt their friends. Well, no, well, Whatever. I mean, no, it's just Heyman Page. I mean, we don't count Cody. Cody's not the elite. I don't know what Cody is. Cody, Cody, Cody is... Why am I so violent with these hands? I was actually uh, laughing my uh, <laughs> manager about this the other day. Because we were talking about Cody, and we're like, well, yeah, Cody's kind of just himself. Like, is Cody still part of the elite at this point? Like, he's never ta teaming with them. He's never actually doing anything with them. I mean, he never did anything with them in the first place. That, that was never yeah, really his thing. True, true. true. All right. We're going to flash right through these uh, right through these Q&As because we've been going on long we enough. Got through, we, got, 
We have to do the half year wrestling awards. Oh. Yeah. All right. So we have a few here. Some that I kind of cherry picked out of the uh, out of the bunch. So very first one, Mason Goldberg on YouTube. Who wins G one thirty? And I feel like after tonight, that's kind of hard to Fuck. predict now. Fuck. It's harder now. You can't just pin uh, one person. Fucking, if there, I don't know. Because it's like before pandemic, I would have said Jay White. I would have said Okada, but Jay White would be the. I'd say like Jay White forty nine percent, Okada fifty one. Yeah, I was almost certain I finally said been I, Okada and Jay White, but now it's like I have no I think, idea. I think it's still Okada, honestly. It could still be Okada. I, I just think pray that it's not if Okada versus Evil, Sonata in the finals. I I think that it's it might be. I think that Evil as champion, let's say he's champion until Wrestle Kingdom. Sonata is a dark horse pick to win G one. Unfortunately, yeah. Um, because that's a, that's a major match. Uh, Naito is a theoretical pick, oh, right, baby, that's to win G one and and have and have a rematch. But I don't fucking know. If you ask me in three weeks i might have like once i see what these tours look like and what is the fuck might happen then i might have an answer for you after dominion i, I don't fuck evil's gonna win g1 <laughs> <laughs> exactly all right so this one's a little bit far out there for you guys but uh dream new japan match dream njpw versus AEW match fuck yeah can i say uh, no yeah. can i say no no, I don't okay, want. For me, I don't have Cassie versus Toriano. That's just kind of the end of the story. Uh, I think the answer is, man, none of it excites me <laughs> really. Like, uh, yeah, like, like none of it excites Joseph. I don't want. I don't like anybody in Ada. Like they're the best people who would fit are the elite. I don't. Air. I don't want them around. So I so I I actively think every day about not. So sorry to fuck up the question. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There is a correct answer. There is. Okay. There is. There is. And it's the correct answer because it was supposed to happen and it didn't. And it's Orange Cassidy versus Minoru. Suzuki. This is very true. Oh yeah, we robbed. We deserve I, this match. So can I, can I actually say that I think that that is a great match for where it was going to happen. I would not want to see it in New Oh, Japan. no other place but Joey Janela's Yeah, no, 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 that no. That was the only place I, that I, I think, I think for that, sure. I think that is the perfect That's spot the for it. Spot. New Japan it has to be a huge, smarky, like, tiny yeah. Legion Hall. All the fans are on top of each other. That's where it's meant to be. I totally agree. There was agree. no other place that, that was happening. Yeah, for sure. Um, Who the fuck is in AEW? Uh... I can I like the the cop out is Kenny Omega versus Kota Ibushi and we can just How fucking have it match? and then I and then I never have to fucking hear about I dream to never hear about that <laughs> fucking match. My dream is that we just fucking have it and then it's done. Leave it alone. <laughs> okay. It's true. All Shut right, up. all right, all right. Fair enough, fair enough. All right, now this question I feel like is probably not going to have an inclusive answer because of everything going on. But what do you think of mm -hmm. the future for New Japan of America is going to look like? Which I feel like right uh, now there is on, nothing dead, that is going on for this company. Dead on arrival. America. Dead. There is nothing, there is nothing for this company right now. That was a bad idea before the pandemic. Yeah, I, I, I don't think, like, it was a, I don't think it was a upfront lucrative idea. I think that their idea, and whether or not it was good or bad, more probably more bad than good, was we're gonna have something ten years from now, but we're not gonna have something this year, next year, or the year after. Is that a bad idea? Maybe. Who knows? But uh, as of now, there is no American expansion. America. Jay White's never going back to New it's Japan. Like basically, you can't get Jay White this, out of America. What at this moment out of in time, there is no New Japan of America. There is a Lions Break Collision. There is no New Japan of there America. At there is no time. New Japan and America in the same. The fact that I can watch it in America seems risky. I shouldn't be allowed. Yeah, it's New Japan. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, getting out of that. Let me get into Mellow DJ. Uh, DJ. Jesus, I'm too tired for this shit. For, um, from Twitter. Jay White or Kenny Omega? Oh, Lord. Forrest. 
Jay White, easy. Like, that's the easiest question that's ever been asked. Oh, boy. In theory, Jay White. In theory. But that's in fair. execution, it's Kenny Omega. I, 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 like, if if I'm being asked who would I rather right now, I mean, obviously, I'm the, I'm the Jay White guy. Um, in a vacuum, I would say Kenny. If I yeah. were to fa if I were to factor in everything around them, Jay White unquestionably. If it is who would I want for the next five years, unquestionably Jay. I feel like for this question, it's like if you want a great match right this second, Kenny. But if you want something Come that's on, meticulous, artistic, and you want something that has a lot of like replay value, if you want to actually analyze it and break it down T by T, Jay White. I feel like there's kind of no wrong answer in this situation, honestly. He's the best one. He's the best one. Could Juice, I'm going to guess Juice Robson, be a main event guy? Could? Yes. Will he? No. Uh, That's the right answer. Yeah. Could he? Yeah. Yes. Uh, could he? I mean, if everything goes well, he's the best face he in He could be a main event guy somewhere else. New Japan sees basically him as Black Nido. So, yeah, that's not gonna, it's not going to happen. That, that, that's basic. Black Nido. That's basically uh um, that's basically the answer. Literally anywhere. Juice is white. Um there is no like yes. I mean, it's, it's Juice could main event. Juice could main event any. Juice could Juice could be excellent anywhere. True. New Japan. New Japan he could be excellent. But they don't but look at him like that. They they don't they don't look at him like that. He's going to be excellent, but he's not going to be a main eventer. Excellence in main events, as we've discovered in the last year and a half of New Japan, not exclusively tied to each other. In fact, it's usually opposite. Well, I call Juice Black Naito because that's the closest thing to black we're getting in New Japan. So, yeah, he's, he's Black Naito to me. All right, so uh, where do you see the returning Young Lions and one-offs on Excursion potentially going on the card? Well, but I ask nowhere right now. But maybe, nowhere. maybe a year no or two out from anywhere. now. A year or two out from now? Oh, I think uh, if we talk about five years down the line, Shota's probably going to take the reins away from Okada, and I think that uh, Ren Narita is a future junior race. So that's that's me. So, so here is here is I actually have conversations about this a lot. I'm of the mind that young lions have no rights, but I have this conversation because people like young lions. Um, so Kawato came back and he's factoring into the junior. I think he's the next junior up. Crowd connection can't beat. It. Uh, Ren is going to be the second guy there. He's go he's going to be the second guy. He's going to beat Kawato a lot. Kawato is going to beat him more. Shota is next Tanahashi slash Okada. He's the very clearly he's the next guy. He's going to be the next guy to beat Okada in in the Tokyo Dome main event. He's going to get the torch passed to him. Uh, Yuya Yuamura is a young line currently. He's going to go out on excursion. Uh, never. Um, he's going to be Naito. We're all gonna. He's gonna be. He's gonna probably, for the most part, be more engaging and better than Shota. And a lot of people are gonna be pissed that Yuya Yuamura is not being pushed as well as Shota. Yeah. We're I gonna can, be I mad. See it already. It. Tom Tomiyuki Oka is gonna run whatever remnants of Suzuki Goon there, and he's and his stealing realistically is Ishii done perfectly well. Like, he's he's young Ishii, but Ishii wasn't pushed until he was 38 years old in 2013. Y Oka is younger. He has that brawling energy. He's a homegrown New Japan product. He's going to do very well. Um, Yoda Suji has anywhere in the card Yoda Suji is going to be good in. He's probably going to be Oka's big rival, but he could also be big because like, like Takayama could win major championships or he could go and shoot punch random people. Takayama, good anywhere. Yoda Suji, big Takayama energy. Got a kind of a gut, got long hair. Excellent. Carl Fredericks is going to lead Bullet Club. He's going to be the other foreign. He's going to be the uh, he's going to be the foreign leader. He's going to feud with Shota, but he's going to be Kenny Omega to Shota's Okada and Yuamura's Naito. That's that is how I see it kind of shaking out. I don't know who the other LA Dojo guys are. 
They're, they'll factor in somewhere. Claire Connors and Alex Hoffman, they'll fall in line somewhere. All right, why wasn't June yep. Akiyama pushed as one of the four pillars of heaven? This is not a question I can answer Just, because yeah. I don't, I'm not familiar with his work, so I'll leave that up to the OGs. Oh, yeah, I, that's easy. Uh, Baba doesn't like to change things. <laughs> uh, he had his four guys. He wanted to run Misawa into the ground, and that was how he Mission did it. Mission accomplished. Let's give a round yeah. of applause to the vision of Giant Baba, the execution. Yeah, it was just like, Misawa's our guy, that's the guy, and everyone else, you can all lose to him, one <laughs> at a time. I, and... I, I don't watch all, I, I've never really watched the old All Japan stuff. It's hard for me to go and watch things that I generally know the rules to. Um, but I once looked up the match history, the singles match history, between Misawa and Kawada. And my god, oh my there is god. a... That is that is very lopsided. It, you're telling me I am just about to start their series for Walking the King's Road, and that is a long history. It might it might, it might be like one in fifteen in favor of Misawa. Like it's Kawada like, got like Kawada got like one. He got like two, I think. It's very it's very few. I remember yeah, looking no, that, that up. That was the thing. Like, fuck. All right, so moving on from that, we got three more that we're done. So choose three wrestlers. I'm going to make this one so it's not too far provoking and we're not spending too much time on it. Choose one wrestler to go on excursion for the next three years. I mean, I, you you have to cherry pick somebody. Uh, out. You should all stay home. Exactly. Yes, yeah, yeah, all, everybody yeah, no. stay home. Uh, well, I mean, like, go on excursion. Uh, let's say, let's say uh, if coronavirus was, didn't exist. Yeah, like, who, who do you leave to go and improve? Uh, can I say Kenny Omega last year? And then we just wow. never let him back? <laughs> Ooh, hot take. You know, I'd send Suji out, you know. Uh, Suji rules. But yeah, just beat some people up on the American Indies. It'd be fun. Do more, like, there, there's great gifts of just Takayama just straight punching people. And Shinsuke Nakamura trying to punch him back. It's the yeah. best. They're always the it best. Rules. Suji, just do that. Only do that. Watch Takayama. Don't look at the recent footage. Watch the prime Takayama. Dye your hair blonde and go punch Don Fry. You can beat him. I would be, I would be very happy with this. Also, I would yes. say send Yoshihashi. That way, people can appreciate him when he comes back or when he's gone. No, fucking the memes are done, and that's why I was so defensive of Kawato. You people aren't gonna meme Kawato into the goddamn ground like you did Yoshihashi. I won't allow it. I let you guys meme Yoshihashi around, and now I'm the only one appreciating my weird-looking boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, choose two wrestlers to never challenge for the title again. I'm gonna assume you mean the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. The easy answer is uh, you could just challenge for everything else, and it'll be fine. No. Yeah. yeah. You need Okada. It's his belt. No, I'm going to I'm gonna say Okada because sink or swim without the belt. You can't be a belt with legs the whole time. If you can't survive without the belt, then Exactly. I want to see him do it, something different and see if he will actually survive. I want to I want to I want to see Okada uh, fizzle out. If you're not the champion, you can't you're not going to be called the best wrestler exactly. in the world anymore. So let's sink or I'm swim. Gonna say, I'm going to say Naito and like a small and uh, Sonata. Oh yeah. Okay. So Okada. Sonata. I. You know what? <laughs> Okada Sonata <laughs> is probably the the easiest answer. Here's the thing. I think Sonata. I think Sonata would be a fine champion, he but would. I don't want to see him <laughs> challenge for belts. Well, I mean, that's why they handed <sighs> him the like uh, six man title. That way, he didn't have to challenge for it. All right. So choose one wrestler to become IWGP Heavyweight Champion. Chingo. Easy answer. That's probably the correct answer. I would have rather it have been Shingo in this role than Evil, but I'll, I, I guess we'll go with Evil. Like, honestly and truly, as soon as Shingo came no, yeah. into New Japan, this is where I started to notice how better Shingo was. It's not fair to compare. I mean, I don't think it's fair to compare Shingo to Evil. How long's Evil been wrestling? Shingo's been great for, like, two decades. A decade, yeah. Yeah, yeah but I didn't know who Shingo was a decade ago. No, 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 no. I, but I, I did. Yeah, you yeah. did. I didn't I know who he was. When did. he came into New Japan, I knew him from his match with Ilya Dragunov, and that is it. Man, he has been crushing it everywhere yeah, forever. That's, listen, that's y'all gotta like, remember, there was, uh, there was, I, I literally spent all of my life watching WWE. I literally just got around to watching other shit five years ago. Who did everybody? Who are you impressing? 
<laughs> All right, can you let me have my call, can you let me have my uh, baby face come back, sorry, please. Thank you. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> did that. We all. I look. I don't know. I didn't know who Shingo was. I'd heard of Shingo, and there was a um, there was a like a a bracket posted of people who were like you know some Facebook page, and it was like oh we're doing like a uh, you know uh, who's the who's the greatest junior of all time in place of best of the super juniors fan vote, and they it was like this huge like sixty four people tournament and they'd seed eight they'd seed the brackets and it's like okay interesting and it's like okay here and it, a mess of a bracket there was there was a bracket that it was like kenta was the four seed and he wasn't in the same bracket as jushin thunder liger and Rey mysterio like he was in the bracket with will osprey was i think the one seed in that bracket. kenta was number four and will osprey was number four. it was a mess i'm telling you and in the shingo was in the same bracket as kushida and I think it was, like, just below. Now, I'm more familiar with Kashyyyk. And I don't know how prolific Shingo actually is. So I was, I, I asked, is, does that seem correct? And the overwhelming consensus from people who were shitting on this bracket was Shingo could pro, in a, in like a bracket that doesn't include Liger, Kenta, someone like Marufuji, something like that, you're probably, you can get Shingo as a number one he is that story. And so I, I, it was like, I was there. I was like, okay, I, I, I don't know the reputation. I understand the reputation. I don't say Shingo for the, uh, for the heavyweight championship. Still, uh, let's assume he's there. I'm still saying Juice Robinson. We're, we're fantasy booking. Yeah, absolutely. I can, I, let me, let me live with this. That's my son. Joseph. Did you say yours already? Oh, you say yeah, you Shingo. agree with Shingo. It's okay. Shingo. Okay, awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's Shingo. definitely it's Shingo. Shingo. Shingo or Juice? Either one. Either one. I'm saying, I'm saying Juice because that's my that's that's my boy, and I whenever he comes, you know, back. I'm not as familiar. With maybe like, maybe Shingo. like five years from now, when I'm like thirty or something. Well, Ju Juice, Juice is, is like what thirty-two? <sighs> he's like early thirties, right? He's 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 a little younger than Okada, I think. Mm. He's around that age, so he's probably like thirty. I don't think he's late twenties. I think he's somewhere in thirty, but he's got. Some time. Um, I mean, he does, but you know, I don't know when the time's going to come. Would you? Would you? Would you want to leave? Because he shacked up quarantining in the UK with Tony Storm. Do you want to go to New Japan and lose? Do you really want to do that? Yeah, I wouldn't. Pretty true. And yeah, it's pretty true. All right, guys, that was the death of the pro wrestling podcast. That was a. Uh, that was a uh, really, really really long but also a really good chat i had with these three with these two guys here so thank you both for soba and joseph for coming on here and airing the way with new japan and AEW and nxt and white pro wrestling sucks in 2020 uh th thank you for having us uh i appreciate the fact that uh nobody just hung up on me because i talk the most uh i'm sure that it crossed your mind but uh, <laughs> no, no comment because it, it, it was just a lot that i'm the reason we can admit i'm the reason why this was three hours long well, i mean there was a 10 minute uh, tangent it's... where i'm like forrest you've been talking for 10 yeah. minutes straight now <laughs> do you want to wrap up soon no i don't <laughs> this is all i do this is all i want to do you think i want to do video essays it's because i didn't do well as a podcaster no one wants to hear these tangents so i fucking cut them up and put them into video essays and very few people watch those. Well, anyway, thank you all for uh, watching, listening in. If you made it all the way to it, which uh, if you did, uh, please comment down below like 18 question marks. That way we know you made it to the very end. <laughs> because if you did, you deserve every medal in the world. <laughs> Weed them <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah. Only people who would listen to the end know why the 18 question marks are there. So. That was always my favorite shit. When I would like do long podcasts, at the end I'd say like, "Oh, com if, if you would listen to this point, comment this just to see." Very few people did. There were one or two who would say that. I'm like, "You are a, tr a did trooper. you watch the I whole thing or did you skip through some of it?" Be honest. There's no way. There's no way because I fucking talk for ten more minutes after I said comment. This. You know how I talk. Exactly. I try to keep it short and simple. And then there's Forrest. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, Joseph, Joseph was also here too with his hot takes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have opinions. Oh, yeah. I love your opinions though. I would like to say, Joseph, that I follow you. I don't follow Dave well, Meltzer. I don't either. 
and I'm so, and, I, and I'm glad that I talked to you today because uh, I want nothing more than for us to be friends. <laughs> well, we are friends, and we have discussed thoroughly that uh, wrestling is dying. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not quite there yet, but you know, I, one one of us has to be cynical. One of us has to be the optimist. <laughs> it's true. And and the roles aren't what you'd think. Like I said, middleman here, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm yeah. just here, I'm just here to uh, ask the questions, ask the ask the very boiling hot questions that these guys answers. <laughs> the boiling hot questions. So hot take Joseph and Rational Forest come in and, and simmer down on these hot questions. But anyway, thank you all for listening again. <laughs> we're about to meet the three hour mark, so we're gonna head up out here once again. Joseph Montecilio. On his YouTube channel, link in the description, probably somewhere in this video too. Forest Sova, link in the description, probably somewhere on this video too. Myself, I'm here. Thank you all for watching. Love you guys always. I'll see you all later. Peace out, guys. In reality, in most scenarios, they fucked Naito. I should be irate. I'm not. I don't feel like you can because really even he, care at this point, you know? I mean, you can, but I feel like you I, shouldn't, I you know? I disagree. Because here is my rationale. As the negative about New Japan guy. Here is my rationale to it. This match was two matches. Mostly, the first half, a little, like, outside of spare moment of this match, is... A cluttered fucking mess. Now, I recognized it halfway through this 40-minute match. The reason it's a cluttered fucking mess is because they have to establish a top heel on one day's notice. Mm -hmm. Right now, they have to establish a top heel. So, most of the beginning of this match, it's it's not good. It's slow. It's, it's them boring. It's like a beast, basically. They, are, they, they have to establish, like, okay, here are here's evil's thing. There, and you'll notice there was no interference for the first 35 mm -hmm. minutes of this yep. match. The, because they had to establish Evil's ness. Because it is a little bit different than it was in Allied He didn't. Blah, 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 blah. They had to establish Evil's ness. And I was like, okay, I get it. I understand. There's a reason why the first half of this match is this way. That doesn't change the fact that the first half of this match is this way this match happening the way that it did setting up evil like this blah 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 blah. this confirmed to me what that evil that this is an audible decision that this wasn't the plan back it, it, that could that, that this is what confirmed it to me because they now need to establish evil as a jay white equivalent it has to, he has to be equivalent to jay white's status that and hurts so, me so mm, much i yeah. i i yeah. agree those two i agree but i also don't put almost anyone near jay white so blah, blah, blah. so what what they have to do is they have they spend the first half of the, they have one one match now it's like essentially one match to establish evil's ness so they spend the first 20 to 25 minutes Pretty much just doing that, sparing moments like the like the baseball slide and the throwing into the barricade. I thought that was good. I was like, okay, the Kenta match went way too long with Kenta playing to the crowd. Naito is going after it. I agree with Joseph. Naito looked uh, bored, and he didn't commit to feeling like he didn't feel like he had any feelings. To it whatsoever. What was his face and when that, he first came out? Did anyone notice that? Like when Naito first came out, he had like this face. He was just he, sweaty. He looked kind of. He was ready. just sweaty. And, and I will put it's this. Not in Japan. I guess. Yeah, I will. And, and I will put that. A lot of times, I absolve Naito. Thing. That's on Naito. That like evil can't make Naito look rushed. They can't make Naito look that. And a lot of people will say, "Ah, oh, he's just tranquilo. That's blah blah blah. That's his gimmick." And I will respond to that and say, "I mean, watch his major match. Naito's thing is he has a, an acute sense of timing of when to go slow and when to go fast. Fast, slow, they juxtapose both. 
Right, he's it's the, dynamics. Lato Kata versus, he's dynamics uh, and all things Lato Lato Kata versus Knights he's, of the Wrestling 12. He's the best at that. I don't think, like, the only person I could think of who has that sense of timing of when to go and when to stop is Jay White. And he does it differently. Jay White stops and starts momentum. Naito stops and starts how fast the match goes. The control, like, the, the Stardust Genius thing, people said that they, they started calling him that because of how good he was at laying matches. He has a sense of timing that you can't really teach. You just kind of learn it. And anyways, first half of this match, kind of a mess. I forgive it, but I un but it is there. It is there, and you have to acknowledge that when you're looking at the big picture of this. When you're looking at this match, if you're judging it as a match, the first half of this match is a complete and total travesty from a match perspective in a vacuum. In a vacuum, this the beginning half of this match is a travesty. There is more at play than the match. In 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 that first half, it doesn't matter in a historical sense. As a match, the first half was a travesty. Second half, I was beginning to enjoy it, and I would be lying because only, I've only watched it once. And on replay, this match is probably uh, an, an objective mess. But I would be lying if I said that I didn't sort of believe that Naito was in trouble with the sharpshooter after his knee goes through. Yep. I, I'm not, I'm, I would be lying if I said that I didn't sort of look as like, huh, not like, oh, Naito's going to lose, I'm totally bought in, blah, blah, blah. But like, sort of like a, huh. If, it hap if, it hap if the finish was right here, I'm like, you know what? I'm mad I it would, kinda I just kind of came out of nowhere, lie. but yeah. I would be lying if I didn't say that when Ishimori came out and and get, uh, fucking Naito was attacked and Hiromu came out, I would be lying if I said that I wasn't like, okay, they've done the basic Jay White interference spot where it's not done to obscure evil's chances. It's done to flip momentum in a match, which mm. is... Which is the cheating that I'm fine with. I, right. I would be lying if I didn't start in the second half of the match. I would be lying if I didn't start to doubt the 100% results that I came in with of Naito is going to win. I did it. It didn't skew into 50-50. I wouldn't even say it skewed into 60-49. Still pretty sure Naito was going to win. But I started to go from 100% and work a little bit backward. And that was the, the bit of that was that's the design of the match. And watching matches live, that is what you're going to get. It, it, it's hard not to get wrapped up in that a little bit. And with the way Evil was set up, I, I was like, okay, whatever. Maybe. But probably not. Maybe. Uh, when, when, when Dick Togo in a mask came out, uh, I thought it was strange. Because I was expecting, again, I was expecting uh, Yujiro. And when, you, when the mask didn't come off... I thought it was strange. I thought I was like, okay, this Bushi guy is attacking Naito, and they're meant to make you think, oh, okay, it's Bushi. And it's obviously not Bushi, but it's like, oh, okay, Bushi is attacking Naito. And I thought I was going to rip off the mask, and then Naito gets stomped in the dick. And this sort of taps into what I was talking about with the, um, with the end of Golden, Tecker, uh, Golden Lovers versus Dangerous Tekker. Uh, they're called the Golden Lovers, by the way. I'm sick of people talking about Golden Aces. They're the Golden Lovers. Um, where it was like, okay, Naito's gotten attacked by an interfering guy. He's gotten stomped in the dick. And he just got hit with the STO. Now, I'm sitting there like, but Naito has to, Evil isn't going to win the title. <laughs> This is everybody. So, that was literally everybody. But I saw the stomp, and I saw the ST, and I'm like, there's no way he was kicking out of that. This is it. And and, and I'm like, maybe Naito kicks out of it. He's the heavyweight champion. And then it goes three, and I'm sitting there kind of bemused. I didn't, I didn't, again, I'm with Tyler. I didn't really know what the decision was. Now, I will say, very quickly, I came to a realization after they revealed Dick Togo. I realized, one, Jay White and Kenta are never coming. <laughs> no. They're gone. They're gone. 
They, th there are two people. In, the Bullet Club's a Japanese faction now. There are two. They have. They they went and signed Dick Togo to hang out with Evil because Kenta and Jay White are never coming back. They're never coming back. You thought like, oh, uh, Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows, they left. Uh, they, they, they got fired by the WWE, and they're going to come back. They're never coming back. They live in America. Yeah, it ain't coming the coronavirus here. has ravaged this country. They're never oh, coming yeah, they back. they're starting to creep up in Japan, too. So Japan better be careful before they get shut the fuck back down again. You're right. But they're never coming back. That's one. Two, uh, I can't... I can't get mad at New Japan for this. I should be. I'm a Naito fan. I've, I was cheering about the, the Naito thing. Naito should get the, the championship. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, I can't get mad about this because these people have uh, blown up New Japan, kind of. They've blown it up in the face of this pandemic. It's shit's fucked up. Yeah, out I don't there. feel like New Japan, honestly. I didn't know what the, I didn't it's know what the hell I was watching at the end of the show. Like, like Joseph is right in that it's like, oh, Jay White was gonna beat Evil. Be, Jay White was gonna beat Naito because the Bullet Club guy beat Naito to win the belt. I can understand that from one perspective, but when I start thinking about the the ramifications of the entire company, and I will completely say, Joseph as somebody. I, this is why I don't like get ardent and disagree with, but mostly because I like him. But two, but the other reason is because Joseph is a cherry picker. He watches matches for matches. When I'm watching New Japan, I'm thinking of the ramifications of the match uh, next month. Like, what does this mean for New Japan? If you're cherry picking. You're not thinking, you're not factoring that in. And it's totally fine. I'm not like, you're not like less of a person mm -hmm. because of that. It's just the way you're watching matches. It's the way I prefer to watch matches. I want to understand the atmosphere around a match. And that might explain why. So when Joseph watches this match, even though he's seen bits and pieces of New Japan Cup, he's seen build up, he's seen New Japan Cup final, he's seen this. When he's saying this is a disaster of a match and the booking decision is catastrophic, I totally get it. Objectively, you say Evil beats Naito for the double championship after joining Bullet Club. That sounds ridiculous, and it probably is. But I look at it, and I see New Japan... New Japan's completely... First of all, New Japan's completely out of ideas... And they're just trying to come up with they're something. They're throwing just shit at the wall at this point. They're just trying to see what sticks. And I fucking, like, New Japan has no idea what to do. And they are doing anything. Because their roster is real fucked up. Like, Will Ospreay, probably going to be a real big factor this year. Gone. Jay White, probably going to be a real big Gone. factor this year. Penta, probably going to be a real big factor mm -hmm. this year. Carl Frederick. Probably going to be a real big factor this in America. Not in Japan. They're, and they're never going. Never. Gorillas of Destiny are probably going to be a. We're probably going to be a factor in the tag division. Never going to be. They're never coming. Uh, juice back. Finn. Finn Juice. Oh. Never uh, yeah, coming gone. back. Gone. El Fantasmo. Gone. <laughs> uh, never coming back. So you have a fucked up company. And instead, and this is where I started to understand what this show was. This show was not Dominion. Because Dominion is a big climactic show that closes out the Wrestle Kingdom to, 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 to G1 portion of the year. It's a big major show. It closes out the first half of the year. G1 opens up the second half of it. That's how the New Japan schedule has worked since 2012. When Bushi Road purchased the, this wasn't Dominion. This was essentially New this Beginning. This was Wrestling Kingdom Part Three. Honestly, <laughs> this was New Beginning. This what this was New Beginning 2012. Yeah, where they're like, oh yeah, we yeah, yeah, oh yeah. I totally see where you're coming from. We don't know what we're doing, 
We are in a real weird spot. Bushiro has just purchased this company. We're throwing anything around. There is a pandemic outside. We don't know what the next week of our activity is going to be. We now have to establish evil as the leader of Bullet Club. What the fuck else are we supposed to do? Now, you could have had this and that. And I, the fact that Naito lost to me shows that they are not working with a system because the system would dictate you have Naito retain, evil drops down and goes and faces Shingo and fuse with LIJ while Naito goes and faces other mixed opponents and just get set up for a major match later in the year. That's what the system dictates. That's how the system works. Evil winning the championship, we don't Threw know where evil is. Off. We don't know where evil is in a hierarchy because we can't He's never tell. been at this we spot have no before. Idea. That's why it's so weird when it's like he... It's like saying it out loud. It's like he's the champion? Hmm. Huh? Yeah. It, there's a different schedule... Like, there's not, like, it, there's a different schedule. G1 is not in a few weeks. There's this weird summer tour. There's, and there's a, there's a quarter, there's like a quarter of the roster there. There's no heavyweights and there's no junior. You have a, a, you're running a skeleton crew in New Japan. And you have to run shows so that you don't go out of business. What do you do? You make do with what you have. Now, their basic strategy when this is is throw someone defects and goes to Bullet Club and get some kind of I didn't think it would come at the expense of Naito. But I think that objectively, in a vacuum, this is a horrific decision. It's 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 evil is the IWGP heavyweight. I don't even in the IWGP Intercontinental Champ. He beat Naito to do it. That's odd. That's a bad decision. Objectively terrible. And if people want to react like that, I understand. But as a viewer of New Japan, I get it. I like I, I I'm I don't know I don't know if I'll be watching New Japan in twenty twenty one. Because if this doesn't pan out and it's insane and a mess, it's like okay, I don't need to watch this anymore. Yeah. I could come out liking New Japan way more than I did previously. But the fact of the matter, and I've been rambling for a long time. I really do apologize if anybody else wanted to talk. This is, you have me half asleep, and I just saw, a, 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 I just saw a, a, a Listen, weird we, we fucking all saw show. the same thing. We're all so befuddled. I saw a weird fucking show. And so I've been talking for a long time. But objectively, yes, Joseph. I agree. In a vacuum, this is a disaster. This was a mess of a match. It's like it was. It was a mess. In anything bad that you say, you're right. I totally agree with you. But to me, the way that I view this match, and the way that I view this show, and the way that now because of this match. I look at the New Japan Cup final different. The way that I view the, these things, it just kind of ends up being, okay, you have no idea what you're going for because all your plans are in Florida. Like, like a big part of your roster are in Florida and whatever Will Ospreay, wherever Will Ospreay is. Your, your company is kind of fucked up. So you are trying to make do and so it wasn't about the results the result is we'll see what the results leads to the angle set up at the end of the match i'm very interested i'm i'm interested the the the, the restructuring of bullet club i'm interested i'm going to watch it i'm going to be i'm interested in it new japan pre and post coronavirus even close to similar how it was going into New Japan Cup and Mark. It isn't. It's, I don't know if it's good. I don't know if it's bad. I know that I'm interested in it. I don't know if I'll be 
happy with it at the end of the year. But as a fan of New Japan, I think it's interesting that they went with the decision of blow it up. We'll figure it out as we're going. 